In the Mirror Universe, Spock, well, Mirror Universe Spock, would send the Prime Universe Captain Kirk and his crew back to where they would belong. We can't be sure what exactly happened afterward in Alpha Canon when it comes to the Mirror Universe and Spock's rebellion, but let's take a look at how Star Trek Continues thinks it might have happened. With the Prime Universe crew gone and the Mirror Universe crew returned, Captain Kirk ordered Scotty to ensure that neither universe would be able to interact with each other again. Kirk would become enraged after finding out that Spock had not dealt with the Hulkins. Kirk would make his way to the bridge to handle the Hulkin question himself, once and for all. He would give the Hulkins 30 seconds before ultimately firing photon torpedoes full spread against the planet. Spock, still torn at what he should be doing, would warn that a photon attack would cause radiation fallout and kill the entire population. Captain Kirk had been counting on it to kill everyone and ordered the slaughter of the Hulkins. Spock would attempt to utilize logic to convince Captain Kirk to take diplomatic measures. Captain, if I may. Logic dictates that the survival of the Hulkin civilization could prove profitable for the Empire for many years to come. You could be the first to set the precedent of diplomacy that could yield long-term benefits. I would recommend lesser measures. You've given me much to think about, Mr. Smart. Fire. And Spock would fail. A brief and contentious argument would take place on the bridge between Kirk and Spock after the destruction of the planet. The ISS Enterprise A would detect additional detonations in the planet's crust. The Hulkins had planted charges next to the dilithium crystals in order to destroy them in case Starfleet decided to do what well, Starfleet did. The Enterprise would be unable to beam up any of the crystals, nor stop the detonations themselves. Another brief and tense argument would occur between Spock and Kirk before Kirk would storm off the bridge. Spock would attempt to talk to Lieutenant O'Hara to plead his case, but be interrupted as three Kumari-class Andorian battleships would be detected dropping out of warp on the edge of the system. They would signal the Enterprise that they no longer recognize the Terran Empire as their authority. Commander, three Andorian vessels dropping out of warp just outside the system. Computer, analysis of approaching ships. Working. Kamari class battle cruisers. Armaments, 180 degree particle cannons. Hull composition, duranium alloy. Top of the line. We're receiving a transmission from the Andorians. They say they witnessed the destruction of the Hulkins, and they no longer recognize the authority of the Terran Empire. It has begun. What has? Revolution, Lieutenant. Revolution. Spock would note that the insurrection had begun and signal to Captain Kirk. Kirk would give the orders that the Enterprise should destroy the Andorian ships if they made any tactical moves. Spock would outright refuse the order. Kirk, after failing to use a device in his office to kill Spock, would take two of his personal guards to arrest the mutineer. Spock would move against Kirk in the Terran Empire. He would begin to recruit senior officers in an attempt to gain control of the ship. Kirk would of course continue to search for Spock and ultimately determine that Spock had been in the transporter room. Spock would continue to stay one step ahead of Kirk, however, and the captain would only find a technician working on the transporter. The technician would refuse to tell where Spock was and Kirk would send him to McCoy, who would delight in torturing the man. The captain would signal the ship and advise the crew of Spock's insurrection. Spock, Scotty, and others would move quickly to take auxiliary control. However, they would not be able to hide for long. McCoy's torture would be fruitful as the man would give up Spock's position. <laughs> Doctor, another dose. I've never used this much before. I wonder what'll happen. <laughs> Captain. He's of no value dead. Is it your day, is it? Dr. McCoy is really enjoying this. Unless you want him to continue. Where's Mr. Spock? He... He was headed to auxiliary control. 
with Mr. Scott. <laughs> Captain Kirk would order Security Chief Sulu to apprehend Spock and the mutineers. Oh my. Scotty would ultimately lock out main ship controls from the bridge to the auxiliary control, siding with Spock. Security Chief Sulu and Chekhov would attempt to raid auxiliary control. Chekhov would be surprised that Spock's forces had set their weapons to stun. After Sulu had been incapacitated, Spock would be able to talk Chekhov into surrendering and joining the mutiny. While the crew continued to battle aboard the ISS Enterprise, the Andorian ships would finally enter into range and fire on the Enterprise, demanding a surrender. Spock would send communications to the Andorians that his mutineers had control of the Enterprise and they were willing to join the Andorian cause. He would also order that a message be broadcast on the ship 24-7. His message would be one of peace and moving away from the Terran Empire. Captain Kirk would be unable to stop the message from broadcasting, and it would broadcast to all of the crew. The captain's woman would approach Spock and his mutineers. She would ask him to follow her to the captain's quarters. Spock would find the device that could kill Kirk, one that Kirk had attempted to use against Spock, but had ultimately failed. Spock would decline to use the weapon, stating that they would have to use different means. The Rebellion couldn't use the methods of the Terran Empire if the Rebellion were to succeed. Kirk, finding he would not be able to wrest control of the ship back from Spock, would contact the mutineers and ask that he and Spock meet in the officer's quarters to discuss Spock's insurrection, and perhaps even conceding the logic in what Spock was doing. Spock and Kirk would banter back and forth. Kirk would point out how many ships were loyal to the Empire, that Spock couldn't possibly destroy them all. Spock would state that he was loyal to the Empire as well, but this change must happen or the Empire would ultimately fall. Kirk would betray Spock, bringing a weapon after they had agreed not to. But Spock was prepared for this treachery, having Scotty place a field that would nullify the weapons on the deck that they were on. As the two continued talking, the ship would come under danger as the planet was destabilized. The Andorians and the Enterprise would withdraw to a safe distance. Kirk would attack Spock, not realizing that he was outmatched. A Vulcan was stronger and quicker than humans. Kirk didn't have a chance. Spock would find himself with his hands around Kirk's throat and would have to stop himself from killing Kirk. There's that human side. I always knew you'd kill me to get the captain's chair. You're no better than the rest of us. He would walk away from Kirk, continuing to talk, trying to bait Kirk into saying something stupid. And ultimately, Kirk would give his true feelings, and his speech would be broadcast to the entire crew, who would then turn on him. Captain Kirk, the future is coming. You are the past. I offer this crew an alternative. This crew? This crew? They don't need alternatives, they're pawns. Pawns need a king. They serve for my conquests, my victories. You think they're smart enough to follow you? They're mine. I can use them, break them, send them to their own slaughter, and they'll thank me for it. This crew, this crew? They don't need alternatives, they're pawns. Pawns need a king. They serve for my conquests, my victories. You think they're smart enough to follow you? They're mine. I can use them, break them, send them to their own slaughter, and they'll thank me for it! You double-crossing, half-breed traitor! James T. Kirk, you are hereby relieved of command. Spock would relieve Kirk of command, exile him and those who had sided with him. He would then set course for, uh, forward and begin an attempt to reshape the Empire through his rebellion. And he would be successful, reshaping the Empire into something that more looked like the Federation. Though, ultimately, we know that this would lead to the destruction of the Empire and the enslavement of the Terrans, and if you believe other beta canon, ships fired on Earth until it was molten, so basically destroying the human race. So yeah, 10 out of 10, Spock. Subscribed, buddy.